Solomon was a true believer and is a good example of one who was submissive early in his life, but later turned away from the Lord, later turned away from the Lord. Now, Solomon is in heaven today, but we must realize that this is a believer, uh, that he is a, a true believer. In 2 Samuel 7, 14, God called him, my son, my son. In 2 Chronicles 1, 8 through 10, God heard his prayer. He heard his prayer. In 2 Chronicles 1, 11, God made him king over Israel. God made him king over Israel to lead the nation. And according to 2 Chronicles 1, 12, God granted him wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Now, Solomon, throughout his life, was used by the Lord to write three books of the Bible. He wrote uh, most of the book of Proverbs. He wrote Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. So this is a man who's writing scripture. The Lord used him to build the temple in Jerusalem, which took seven years to complete. Uh, he took seven years to complete. But God is using him. He's leading the nation. God is giving him wisdom and knowledge. So he's leading the nation in righteousness. He's writing scripture. Uh, the Lord is using him to build the temple, which is going to be the, the central place for worship in Israel. Okay, And God made him ruler over Israel for a period of 40 years. He ruled for 40 years. Uh, and we are told in 1 Kings 3.3 3, that Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statutes of his father David. This is Solomon early in his life in obedience to the Lord. This is a life in submission to God. Okay, so he loved the Lord and walked in the statutes of his father. These are all indicators of a true believer. However, and what we're talking about here is believers who start out in submission, whereas David, mission accomplished, stayed faithful to the end. Paul, mission accomplished, stayed faithful to the end. These are believers who start well, but don't end well. So by the end of his life, we are told that Solomon turned away from the Lord and worshipped idols. Horrible, horrible thing. In fact, he introduced this idolatry into the nation of Israel. Uh, 1 Kings 11, 1 through 5 says, Now King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh. And some of these foreign women included Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonian, and Hittite women. And here's his disobedience. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, You shall not associate with them nor shall they associate with you, for they will surely turn your heart away after other gods, after their gods. And Solomon held fast to these in love. Relationships matter. They matter. And I think of Proverbs 13, 20, which says, He who walks with wise men, written by Solomon, no less, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Well, here Solomon uh, disobeys the Lord. And uh, God is very clear, saying that if you associate with them, they will turn your heart away. We are not impervious to the pressures of life, which is why it is so important that we make good life choices. And who we choose as a spouse, who we choose as a friend, makes a big impact, a big difference in our lives. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad associations corrupts good morals. Bad associations corrupts good morals. I am very careful with regard to who my friends are, who I let into my life, because they are either going to influence me in the direction of serving the Lord or away from the Lord. It says here that Solomon had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away. Now, this is a violation of Deuteronomy 17:17, 17, 17, where the kings of Israel specifically were told not to multiply wives. Well, Solomon disobeyed that command in the most extreme way. 700 wives and princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away. For when Solomon was old, verse 4 tells us, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of David his father had been. There's the breakaway. So, Solomon was wholly devoted early on, 
given wisdom, given knowledge, leading the nation in righteousness, writing scripture, building the temple. And then little by little, he begins to disobey the Lord and these uh, uh, relationships led him away. And by the end of his life, it says that his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God. Again, as comparing to David, as the heart of David his father had been. Uh, and so, though David was, was faithful in submission to the end of his life, and that's the ideal, Solomon was not. He was not. And this is just like the Exodus generation. They were not either. Verse 5, For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites. And the final word on Solomon is that Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully did not follow the Lord fully. Now, is it possible for a believer to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord? Yes. Yes. We, I just mentioned a moment ago in, in Romans 7, 21, where Paul says, I find in the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. Here, the text tells us that Solomon, a believer who is in heaven today, Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow uh, the Lord fully. In other words, he was, he was faithful early on, and then he broke. And the final word on Solomon is that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Though Solomon was positive toward God early in his life, he turned negative in his later years and was not submissive to the Lord. And the record of Solomon is that he never turned back to the Lord and died in rebellion under divine discipline. Now, that's a terrible way for a believer to go out. And uh, we'll talk about this in future lessons, but I've already hit on this in the past. And that is Hebrews 12, 6 says, He whom the Lord loves, he disciplines like a father, his own son, his own child, because God doesn't spank the devil's children. They have their own judgment. But uh, when a believer turns negative to God and turns away from the Lord, uh, that believer is will, will, if they don't deal with their sin, if they don't correct, and there's always a grace period there, I believe, but if they do not turn around and correct that, if they do not confess that sin and get back into fellowship with the Lord and stay on, on, on course, then they are inviting the Lord's discipline in their life. They're inviting it. And so Solomon died the sin unto death. Now, the New Testament provides several examples of believers who were genuinely saved but later turned away from God. Demas is one such example. Initially, he is mentioned positively by Paul. Uh, he's mentioned in Colossians 4.14 uh, and in Philemon 1.24. Uh, Demas is even called a fellow worker, a fellow worker in the ministry. So here is a man who is walking with the Lord, who is a believer, who is a fellow worker in the ministry. However, in his letter to Timothy later on, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4.10 that Demas, having loved this present world having loved this present world. And here it uh, is talking about Satan's world system, that he turns away from the Lord and he becomes friends with the world. Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Now this suggests that Demas, despite his salvation and prior commitment to ministry, later turned away due to his love for the world. Similarly, Paul mentions two other men, Hymenaeus and Alexander, in 1 Timothy 1.19, whom he says suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. In other words, they did not continue in ongoing submission to God. They suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. And Paul says that he handed them over to Satan so that they will be taught not to blaspheme. These are believers who would be subject to divine discipline. So these were believers who turned away from the Lord, uh, who turned away from God and suffered divine discipline. Paul also reprimanded the Christians in Galatia for their departure from the true gospel in Galatians 1.6, where Paul says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of God for a different gospel. And he rebuked them in Galatians 3.1-3, where he calls them foolish, foolish Galatians. Uh, and he says that they were bewitched for turning away from the Spirit. These are, tr these are believers, these are saved, born-again Christians who uh, early on were walking in truth, walking in obedience, and then turned away. And so Paul rebukes them for being foolish and bewitched. 
And again, this indicates that the Galatians, though initially strong in their faith, were swayed by false teachers and needed correction.